Um, we're going to listen Michael Homer, who also has made a long way, a long trip to be here in Bordeaux, coming from Salt Lake City. And you're going to give us a presentation dealing with Mormon blood atonement and Utah capital punishment. Uh, yes, and while we're, uh, good afternoon. Uh, while we're uh, employing the uh, IT expert here to do something that I would be incapable of doing, uh, let me just note that my, my presentation is an outgrowth of a proposal in the Utah State Legislature just uh, earlier this year to uh, outlaw capital punishment. Uh, and uh, it failed to come out of committee. The proponents uh, or lobbyists uh, elected not to discuss the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints uh, historical position other than to indicate that it was now neutral with respect to capital punishment. Uh, that, in my opinion, was misguided, and uh, that's the reason that I decided to uh, talk about a subject that, by the way, there's very little that's been written about uh, ca the uh, concept of blood atonement in uh, Mormon history. Uh, on and there may be uh, one or two uh, slides that are not necessarily applicable because I've tried to cut down this presentation and didn't, wasn't able to uh, uh, cut down the slideshow. But basically, my outline, every good lawyer knows you tell them what you're going to tell them, you tell them, and then you tell them what you just done told them. And that's, so this is, I mean, this is what I'm going to tell you, that uh, the capital punishment law in Utah is based on Joseph Smith's notion of what capital punishment should be, which is to shed blood. Uh, uh, and that was uh, uh, worked on and uh, increased by Brigham Young. And then there's new prophets following Brigham Young. Utah became finally a state after 40 years as a territory. And then there is new thinking developed, and the new proposal is uh, what I just suggested uh, to do away with capital punishment. So let's start off with Joseph Smith. Uh, on March 4, 1843, Joseph Smith told the Nauvoo City Council, I am opposed to hanging. Even if a man kills another, I will shoot him or cut his throat, spill his blood on the ground. Smith also told the council, that if I ever have the privilege of making a law on the point, I will have it so. But he was, of course, killed before he had an opportunity to make a capital punishment law. Uh, and when he made this, this statement in 1843, uh, he had already uh, established his position concerning capital punishment, which is set forth uh, in these uh, various logs. He also stated... Hanging is the popular method of execution among the Gentiles. Now, those of you who are familiar with Mormon history know that uh, in Mormonism, uh, a non-Mormon is a Gentile. And so in that sense, uh, uh, Jews are also Gentiles uh, in, uh, in Utah. Uh, and then, as I've uh, already quoted, he said uh, that he would uh, uh, favor uh, shooting cutting off one's head or spill, spilling blood. Now, Brigham Young uh, succeeded Joseph Smith, of course, when he died, and he confirmed Smith's position concerning capital punishment, but he also gradually introduced a new wrinkle uh, that became known as blood atonement. The new doctrine was founded on Joseph Smith's teaching that there are some sins that are so horrendous that they could not be forgiven by Christ's atoning sacrifice. And Young, but what Young did in addition to that is he says, but there's a new possibility that those who commit those sins can be forgiven by having their own blood shed. Uh, on uh, March 22, 1845, Young announced uh, during a meeting at the Council of the Fifty in Nauvoo following Smith's death a plan whereby Missouri might be saved. Uh, he was referring to Missourians who had caused bloodshed and death among the saints. And he stated that if the Missouri mob would come to Nauvoo, cast themselves at our feet, and say that they had sinned, uh, sinned a sin unto death, 
and they are now willing to submit to law, let their heads be severed from their bodies, and let their hearts blood run and drench the earth. And then the Almighty would say that they should finally be saved in some inferior kingdom. Now, during the same year, Joseph Smith's uh, brother, William Smith, who was an apostle at the time of Smith's death, uh, published a proclamation in which he uh, claimed that Young uh, and essentially created uh, the, the uh, principle of blood atonement. In 1846, after the Mormons abandoned Nauvoo, uh, Mormon apostle Willard Richards recorded that Young told those in the Mormon convoy that he would not travel with wicked men, quote, who continued to lie and steal and swear and commit in iniquity and follow the camp, and that he would have their heads cut, get cut off for that is the law of God, and it shall be executed, and I swear that I will not live amongst them. Now, after the uh, Mormons arrived in Utah, they finally had the chance to uh, establish laws. Uh, first, it was a theocracy for several years under what they called the state of Deseret. And the first capital punishment law provided that when any person shall be found guilty of murder and sentenced to die, he, she, or they shall suffer death by being shot, hung, or beheaded. Uh, and then finally, when Utah became a territory in 1850, uh, the uh, legislature, which was made up of, of totally uh, all Mormons, and Brigham Young was appointed as the first governor, the legislature passed a provision, when any person shall be convicted of any crime, the punishment of which is death according to the provisions of this act and sentenced to die, said persons shall suffer death by being shot, hung, or beheaded as the court may direct or as the convicted person uh, may choose. Uh, just as a sidelight, Joseph Smith, of course, never mentioned beheading in any of his quotations, but Brigham Young seemed to, appear, uh, seemed to favor beheading over uh, cutting one's throat. What is blood atonement? Uh, in uh, 1852, uh, Brigham Young introduced the concept in the context of interra interracial relations. And he says, a person is justified committing homicide when he shall kill or another in his own defense or in sudden heat of passion caused by the attempt of any such offender to commit a rape upon his wife, daughter, sister, mother, or other female relation or dependent. Uh, and it, it was uh, related uh, also to, obviously, uh, uh, adultery in that situation, uh, apostasy, uh, and uh, in the interracial inter, uh, relations. When a man entered into conjugal relations with the seed of Cain, those of you who understand Mormon history uh, know that Mormons believe that uh, uh, African, African Americans were of the seed of Cain. The only way to repent of sin would be to walk up and say, cut off my head and kill man, woman, and child. He assured them by doing so, it would be do a great deal towards atoning for that sin and it would be a blessing unto them. Uh, so that is essentially uh, Young's definition of blood atonement, that there were certain sins that were so uh, serious uh, that one could only atone for one's sins, not through the atonement of Christ, but through having their own uh, blood shed. Uh, Young also stated during what's called the Mormon Reformation within Mormonism, uh, not a lot uh, in common with the Reformation that occurred here in Europe, uh, but rather a reformation of uh, the own cleansing of the church uh, and uh, through uh, preachings by Brigham Young and others. Uh, in 1857, for example, Young said, Will you love your brothers and sisters likewise when they have committed a sin that cannot be atoned without the shedding of their blood? Will you love that man or woman well enough to shed their blood? And then he went on to say, I could refer you to plenty of instances where men have been righteously slain in order to atone for their sins. The wickedness and ignorance of the nations forbids this principle being in full force, but the time will come when the law of God will be in full force, 
This is loving our neighbor as ourselves. Now you can tell from quotations like this that the Gentiles, that is the non-Mormons in the territory, may uh, have been uh, justified in believing that the Mormons actually were taking it into their own hands and uh, shedding the blood of others, particularly after the famous or infamous Mountain Meadows Massacre, which occurred the same year as this quotation. Now, up until the time of his death, uh, 20 years later in 1877, uh, Brigham Young continued to preach uh, blood atonement. Uh, and in, in fact, in the last interview that uh, he had with a reporter from the New York Herald, uh, he repeated it, but then also denied vehemently that the, uh, the Mormon church itself uh, instituted a practice of blood atonement outside the legal confines uh, of the government. Uh, the same year Young died, uh, that was uh, uh, stated again, God pronounced the death penalty on the murderer, let his law be honored by all the governments of earth, let his blood be spilled upon the ground as an offering for his sin, instead of strangling him to death like a dog, which is not fulfill the law and uh, is a mode of punishment unworthy of any Christian nation. So again, uh, Mormonism taught that for certain sins, uh, one should have their own blood shed and that it was, uh, that person still would not be saved even uh, by being killed unless their actual blood was shed as opposed uh, to being hung, in this case, uh, uh, strangling him to death like a dog. Uh, Mormon authorities, uh, long after Brigham Young's death, continued to preach this. Uh, George Q. Cannon, a famous Mormon apostle in 1882, uh, we do not believe in hanging. We think that if a man sheds blood, his blood should be shed by execution. In Utah Territory, a criminal who has been sentenced to death can elect whether he be shot or hung. The fact, this fact has uh, furnished a basis for all the talk about blood atonement. It does not follow that because we believe a man who has killed another should have his blood shed. Uh, it is a process of law and has no reference to any church ordinance. Uh, the, uh, the church continued to teach this uh, even up to the time of uh, statehood. Uh, B. H. Roberts, uh, probably one of the more famous uh, Mormon historians of this period, uh, quoted uh, a, not the same manifesto that did away with polygamy, but a different manifesto. We regard the killing of a human being except in conformity with civil law as a capital crime which should be punished by the shedding of the blood of the criminal after a public trial. So uh, even though the Mormons vehemently denied uh, that uh, they uh, had a system of blood atonement uh, to kill apostates and, and uh, enemies of the church, and of course those who committed adultery or other crimes, uh, they did continue to teach that uh, the capital punishment should be carried out uh, by the shedding of one's blood. Uh, the Mormon prophet who did abandon polygamy uh, confirmed in 1891, it is part of our faith that the only atonement a murderer can make for his sin unto death is shedding of his own blood through capital punishment as practiced by the state and not the church. So not surprisingly, when Utah became a state in 1896, uh, the, it uh, re-instituted uh, capital punishment uh, by shooting. Uh, in 1888, they did do away with uh, beheading. Uh, no be uh, beheadings actually took place uh, under the territory, uh, but, uh, of course, uh, shooting and hanging did. Uh, this was acknowledged by Joseph Fielding Smith, uh, who said the founders of the state of Utah incorporated in the laws of the territory provisions for capital punishment of those who willingly shed the blood of their fellow men. This law, which now is the law of the state, granted under the condemned murderer the privilege of choosing for himself whether to die by hanging or whether he be shot and thus have his blood shed in harmony with the law of God. Now, this teaching continued up into the... Uh, uh, middle portions of the 20th century. Of course, the most famous proponent was a Mormon apostle by the name of Bruce R. McConkie, who published a book called Mormon Doctrine in 1958. 
And he reiterated blood atonement, uh, stating, but under certain circumstances, there are serious sins for which the cleansing of Christ does not operate, and the law of God is that they must have their blood shed to atone for their sins. Uh, and then he uh, connects that uh, with, Brig which is Brigham Young, with Joseph Smith's uh, prior statement, as a mode of capital punishment, hanging or execution on the gallows does not comply with the law of blood atonement, for the blood is not shed. Now, interestingly enough, beginning in the 1970s, and I think it uh, was uh, consistent chronologically with the execution of Gary Mark Gilmore, who was the first uh, criminal uh, executed uh, through capital punishment, uh, after the stay was put in by the Supreme Court's affirmant decision. Uh, the church began to back off, and ironically, it was again Bruce R. McConkie uh, who f said uh, that we do not believe that it is necessary for men in this day to shed their own blood to receive the remission of sins. This is said with full awareness of what I and others have written and said on the subject. Uh, and uh, from that time, uh, the, uh, uh, the church eliminated hanging and added uh, lethal injection. Excuse me, not the church, the Utah uh, legislature eliminated hanging, added lethal injection, and re but retained the firing squad. And then, surprisingly, in 1987, uh, the church, uh, not publicly, but in their own journal history, stated the church neither promotes or opposes capital punishment. And uh, they continue to, uh, as they continue to argue about capital punishment in the legislature, uh, the church backed off its prior comments uh, that uh, it favored capital punishment. Uh, in fact, a Dan Jones and associate poll uh, in March 1989 showed 31% of all Utahns familiar with blood atonement believe it to be a doctrine of the church which by that time uh, it no longer was. Uh, in fact, uh, the writers of the Encyclopedia of Mormonism, which is a quasi-official uh, encyclopedia, uh, the author of the article on capital punishment missed the point entirely uh, and uh, said the church still believed uh, in capital punishment. Uh, and then that continued up until the t 2003 uh, when... Uh, and 2004, when Utah finally eliminated firing squads as a method of uh, execution. So basically uh, doing away uh, with the mode that had been advocated by Joseph Smith in 1843, uh, and even prior to that, uh, the, uh, the church abandoning the idea that uh, blood atonement was eff efficacious uh, for uh, atoning for certain sins. But in 2021, Utah reinstated firing squads as a backup option in the following cases. And, and simply what it was is that uh, there were uh, problems uh, with uh, supplying uh, the ingredients necessary for lethal injections. Uh, and so uh, the, uh, the state then went back to firing squad as a backup. Now, in, uh, let me just summarize uh, in the from 1850 to 2022, I indicated there had been no beheading, but that was done prior to the state of Deseret. Uh, but uh, hanging, this is what's interesting, there were only six cases of hanging, uh, and by and far the largest number of uh, executions between 1861 and 2010 uh, were by firing squad, and then uh, as lethal injection was introduced, uh, four cases from 1987 to 1999. So uh, as I stated at the beginning, uh, the reason that I uh, recommended this uh, topic for presentation today is because the Utah legislature uh, considered a bill to abolish capital punishment in 2022. The focus of debate was on br the broken system because of the length of appeals. One witness quoted uh, Genesis, 9, Genesis 9, 12, and 13, and another said that capital punishment is a blessing to those convicted of capital crimes. And so you can see that still within 
the thinking, uh, not only of the legislature, but uh, of the people of Utah. Uh, they still cling to this idea that uh, uh, blood atonement is still uh, the law of God. Currently, capital punishment in Utah is by lethal injection with the possibility of a firing squad. The church is neutral on the elimination of capital punishment. The church indicates there is no connection between capital punishment and blood atonement. And in 2021, 51% of Utahns favored capital punishment with an even higher percentage of uh, Mormons. So even though the church went neutral on the subject, uh, it, uh, the citizenry, uh, is still uh, slightly in favor and uh, with uh, the Mormon population considered uh, an even higher percentage. Uh, it is unclear why the Utah Legislative uh, Committee voted against the bill to eliminate capital punishment, but uh, it is my opinion that the reason they have uh, is because uh, neither the legislature nor the citizenry of Utah uh, have been well informed uh, concerning uh, the fact that uh, the church has abandoned uh, its, uh, its uh, promotion of capital punishment. In addition, the church has not provided any rationale for discarding Joseph Smith's teaching concerning capital punishment or Brigham Young's more controversial pronouncements about uh, blood atonement. This is not surprising since the church does not justify any modifications in doctrine uh, including when it changed the uh, church doctrine denying black men the priesthood uh, by acknowledging that prior doctrines are anachronistic and even more significantly uninspired. So uh, I believe that this uh, subject will be brought up again in the, the legislative session coming up uh, in a few months. And so uh, uh, I'm going to be advocating uh, through this forum and others, uh, that uh, the, this historical background of uh, uh, capital punishment in Utah be fully explored uh, and considered by uh, the legislature before any uh, subsequent vote on the topic. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Michael, for this uh, in-depth and diachronic analysis. And it was very interesting. It's a bit surrealistic for a French, you know, who we're not used with uh, this capital yes. uh, punishment, uh, which yeah. is, it's, uh, yeah. I was born uh, in the 70s, and uh, I think it was uh, forbidden in France in, in the early 80s. And, uh, and this, those debates are really astonishing yeah, for us. Although, very interesting. Yeah, although yeah. we must say that Brigham Young uh, was undoubtedly inspired by the French guillotine. Oh. Uh, Which was meant to keep people from suffering because if yes. you use an axe, exactly. it's very painful, whereas the guillotine was very rapid. Right, right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it's because I have read accounts of uh, beheading in, in uh, Great Britain, for example. Yeah, and in your <laughs> town. Well, that was the yeah. nice yeah. More efficient and less painful, right. so that it wouldn't be a cruel punishment right. that yeah. you forbid in your constitution. Right. Yeah, I am very sure that the uh, the two beheadings uh, in Utah prior to the establishment of the state of Deseret were not with the guillotine. However, <laughs> it's well known that France is a humanistic nation. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, okay. so uh, maybe we can uh, answer a few questions in the audience. Yeah. Yes, Susan. You know, Irva LeBaron, who was into blood atonement in sort of a horrific way, if he might have scared people off the notion of um, blood atonement. Yeah, I mean, cl uh, yeah, clearly the fundamentalist um, uh, Mormons uh, believe that uh, not much went well for the Mormon church after Brigham Young because they began to abandon uh, things such as uh, uh, blood atonement. Uh, and so I'm sure that uh, the fundamentalist Mormons are looking at uh, Brigham Young and other church officials, uh, some of which I've quoted in the presentation. Whether or not that plays out well uh, in to modern people, I mean, it's surprising what people uh, will read. And uh, one thing I didn't have time to cover in my paper uh, in uh, Brigham H. Roberts, who I did mention, uh, wrote what's uh, a seven-volume history of the uh, Mormon church called the... Uh, Comprehensive History of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, published in 1930, and is still the official uh, history of the church. 
Uh, and in that book, uh, he uh, gives a, uh, an apologetic uh, defense of blood atonement, uh, uh, claiming uh, that the Apostle Paul actually uh, introduced uh, blood atonement. Uh, and uh, he comes up with a vague reference uh, to, to support that, of course. And so that may be another reason, quite frankly, why uh, the lobbyists have decided not to uh, mention this history because it also flies in the face of former church apologetics uh, to uh, justify blood atonement. And with respect to blacks and the priesthood, there was uh, the, there were apologetics in the 19th century, uh, of course. Uh, f but uh, leading up to the abandonment, uh, the only uh, uh, rationale that was given for the doctrine was we don't know, but that is what God has commanded. So which is a little bit easier to abandon that just by saying you've had a new revelation. Yes, Massimo. Did the Catholic Church in Utah play any role in this debate in 22, I mean? Oh, yes. They, uh, they, they, they had uh, uh, their uh, representatives uh, testify uh, on the subject. And I think in some ways the reason that the, uh, the Mormon Church has now developed a neutral position uh, is to come into line with, uh, with other uh, Christian uh, churches. Uh, uh, but uh, realizing the, uh, the checkered past in church history on this subject, uh, are, are still reluctant to talk about it in any detail. Theoretically, still uh, doesn't completely because uh, the American uh, uh, bishops are still, uh, you will find somebody reluctant, but the present uh, Pope uh, surely said that uh, the church is uh, against the capital punishment. And uh, also, uh, in the United States, uh, uh, there were very uh, authoritative uh, um, cardinals who said this already 20 or 30 years ago, but it's not a uh, unanimous uh, position. Uh, and even if uh, uh, the official position is that uh, in the Catholic Church, uh, the official position is the church is against death penalty, but you can vote for a candidate who is in favor of the death penalty. That's a document of Benedict XVI. While you cannot vote in favor of a candidate who is in favor of abortion. So there is a difference, uh, which uh, Benedict XVI spelled out in a document. Uh, because, uh, of course, the rationale was with the death penalty you kill the guilty. Uh, and with the abortion, you kill the innocent, so it's not on the same plane. Yeah, and ironically, the, uh, some of the lobbyists of the, of the measure in Utah pointed out the, uh, the duchy of uh, Tuscany that uh, uh, abandoned capital punishment, one of the earliest. Uh, oh, no, no, the earliest. Yeah, the earliest, the earliest yes. The in the world uh, to abandon capital punishment was the Grand Duchy. Right, Duchy. yeah. Uh, the 18, 1860, yeah, yeah. But remember, the uh, when the Republic of Rome was established uh, by Mazzini and Garibaldi, they also abandoned capital punishment in 1849. So, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. But without trial. So I mean, uh, capital yeah. punishment is only when you have a trial. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. I had a uh, question and also a comment, though. So um, maybe I can say them both. Uh, <laughs> all right. So I was wondering, you had mentioned uh, blood atonement in regards to apostasy. Did you have uh, any quotes from either Joseph Smith or Brigham Young specifically? I if you don't have them handy, that's fine. Perhaps you can email them to me. Later. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, there are, uh, uh, you know, Brigham Young uh, had some very loyal apostles. and. Uh, uh, he had some very enthusiastic uh, propagandists uh, who would expand on his ideas. But uh, there are uh, quotations from uh, uh, Jedediah Grant, who was a member of the First Presidency, uh, and then also uh, his, uh, his other counselor, uh, Heber C. Kimball. 
uh, I know that there are, and I can get you quotations, no problem. Thank you. Posse. Now, and, of course, that's the reason that uh, the, uh, uh, the Gentiles uh, in the state were absolutely sure that uh, apostates were being tracked down and killed. Huh. Uh, and there, you know, just one example, go to the Utah Historical Quarterly, and there are many articles uh, written about uh, blood atonement in the 19th century. Hmm. Um, on to the comment. Um, yes. I'm a specialist in uh, East Asian uh, new religious movements, and uh, just the comment I wanted to make is it's really fascinating how much Mormonism has evolved on that issue, given the very clear statements in their early history by their first founder and second founder type of figures, uh, right. Joseph Smith and Brigham Young. For the religions that I study, I can't imagine this type of situation. If there was that clear a statement, that would be the continual orthodoxy. And short of a schism, it just would not change. Yeah. No, no, I, and that's the interesting thing about Mormonism. Even if you listen to uh, Mormon leaders today, they're very quite clear that they don't apologize, uh, <laughs> uh, nor try to explain. The way out of uh, old positions is new revelations. New revelations. Yeah. That's and, uh, fascinating. Yeah. Yes, very. Uh, now, I'm not aware of any revelation with respect to blood atonement. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, uh, of course, uh, that's another reason that you don't talk about uh, the past. Now, the other thing I did not have a chance to mention in my paper is there's a new series of books being published by the, uh, the Mormon Church called Saints. And it uh, theoretically is going to take the place of a comprehensive history of the church uh, as the official uh, history. And so it'll be interesting. My prediction is it won't mention blood atonement at all. Uh, but uh, if it does, uh, it would be it'll be interesting to see what the context is. Thank you. Thank you.